Hey guys, we're going to be completing lesson number five in our math simple solutions. Remember to have your simple solution help pages with you. So number one, in the number 77, the underlined digit is blank times as much as the place to its left. So if we look at 77, they have the seven underlined in the ones place. So it's asking you how much larger or how much smaller is this digit than this digit to the left of it? Well, this is seven ones, whereas this is seven tens. So this is seven D, where this is seven. So the seven in the ones place is one tenth times as much as the place to its left. It's smaller. So as you move to the right on the place value, so let me show you our place value chart. I've not erased it from earlier. So as you move from place to place, this is one tenth smaller. Each one is one tenth smaller than the one next to it. Whereas when you go to the left from the right, it is 10 times as much. So 10 is 10 times as much as 1. 100 is 10 times as much as 10. So 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. Whereas the other way, if you went from 100 million times 1 tenth would be 10 million. 10 million times 1 tenth would be a million. A million times one tenth would be a hundred thousand and so on and so forth that would even go with your decimals so a tenth times one tenth would be a hundredth whereas a thousandth times ten would get me to hundreds a hundredth times ten would be tenths tenths times ten would get me to the one so it depends on which direction you're going Number two, find the sum. Write the sum as a mixed number. Rename your fractions that have a numerator that is larger than the denominator. So they have five six plus three six is eight six. I agree. Eight six equals six six plus two six, which I also agree. So it says rename the fractions that have a numerator that is larger than the denominator. So that would be the eight six. So what's another way to do eight six? as a mixed number. So a mixed number is when you can pull out a whole. So how much would be a whole if six is your denominator? Well, a whole, one whole would equal six, six. So we would have one whole, and then if I took out that six, six from the eight, six, it would leave me with two, six. So you would be left with, or it would be the same, one and two, six. These two would be equal. If you want to simplify that, a fraction um, that would be simplified would be one third. So eight six would equal one and two six, which would also equal one and one third. Number three, write seven hundred thousand plus fifty thousand plus eight thousand plus four hundred plus twenty plus two is a base ten number. So when they say base ten number, that means standard form. It's the plain old number. So anytime they ask for a base 10 number, they want standard form. So this would be 758,422. Um, number four, identify the pattern by stating the rule. So you went from 1 to 3, 9, 27, 81. So to go from 1, once you do that, you can notice that the numbers are getting larger. So you're adding something to it. You're either adding or multiplying. So I can add to to one to get to three, but if I add two to three, would that get me to nine? No, it wouldn't. So if I add, that would be adding two, that would be adding six. So would that be the same for this? So that would be adding three, that would be adding six. Then nine, what would I add to get to 27? Well, that would be um, 18. So there's no pattern in the addition, so let's look at multiplication. So I'm going to mark that out. So 1 times what will get me to 3? That would be times 3. 3 times what would get me to 9? So 3, 6, 9. So that would be 3 as well. What times 9 would get me to 27? So 9, 18, 27. That's also multiplying 3. Well, 
27 times what would get me to 81? Well, would 27 times 3 get me to 81? I don't know that offhand, so I'm just going to jot down my multiplication sentence and complete it. 7 times 3 is 21. 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 2 is 8. So 27 times 3 is 81. So what they are doing is multiplying by 3. Good. Next, complete the fraction model to show 4 times 8 tenths. So they have four tenths. Here's a hole cut into tenths. Here's a hole cut into tenths. Here's a hole cut into tenths. And here's a hole cut into tenths. So I'm actually going to get my yellow. Each of those tenths, there are eight of them shaded. So I'm actually going to do the bottom eight. So there are two tenths left on each model that has not been shaded in. So that right there shows four eight tenths because there's one eight tenth, a second eight tenth, a third eight tenth, and a fourth eight tenth. So that is four eight tenths. Number six is FLC, acute right or obtuse. Well, a right triangle is like a perfect L. We always can put that little box in the corner to show. Um, acute is anything smaller than these 90 degrees, and obtuse is anything larger. Well, this is smaller, so this would be an acute angle. Let's look at number 7. 84 times 49. So let's write 84 times 49. I'm going to use a different colored pen. So I'm starting multiplying with my 1s, which is my 9. So 9 times 4 is 36. 8 times 9 is 72, plus the 3 is 75. You need that place value holder. Next, we're going to multiply with our 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 8 times 4 is 32, plus the 1 is 33. We will add 6, 11, 11 again, and then 4. So 84 times 49 is 4,116. Good job. Number eight, what is the area of this rectangle? Area is when you multiply the length and the width. So area equals length times width. So the length and the width is eight and three. So you would find the area as eight times three. Eight times three is 24. Well, 24 what? 24 ponies, 24 baseballs. We can look and it is inches. So it would be 24 inches and area is squared. So 24 inches squared. Number nine, find all of the factor pairs for 14. So what are all of the numbers that you can multiply together to get 14? So you're looking for all of those factor pairs. So when you are looking at 14, what numbers can you multiply together to get 14? Well, we know 1 in itself can get you that. So 1 times 14 equals 14. And then 14 ends in an even number. And we know even numbers can be, um, a 2 can be multiplied by a number to get even numbers. So 2 times what will get you to 14? Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, that would be 7. So these are your um, pairs to get 14. Number 10, round 629,629 to the nearest 10,000. So I'm actually going to rewrite, sorry, I accidentally bumped that. I'm going to rewrite that number, 629,629 to the nearest 10,000. So this is ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So I am rounding to that digit that place value, you there's a two there. You look to the right, you ask yourself, is it four or less or five or more? Nine is five or more, so you go up one more. So that two will turn to a three. Everything to the right of that will turn to a zero. So by rounding 629,629 to the nearest 10,000, you would get 630,000. Number 11, write four hundredths as a decimal. So what would four hundredths be as a decimal? Well, we'll have our decimal point. We have learned tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So this is four hundredths. So this is your tenths, this is your hundredths, so that four will go into our hundredths. Well, we can't leave this blank because then I would think that would be in the tenths, so we put a zero there. So this decimal here shows four hundredths. 
Number 12, one pint equals how many cups? You can go into your help pages. You'll open one, two times. You go to your measurement equivalency, and it was how many pints? Is that what it was? Number 12, yeah. So one pint is two cups. So you will just write one pint equals two cups. 13. Draw ray A, B in the box. So if we want to draw a ray, a ray is when you have a point and a line off of that point showing the arrow that it goes on and on. So it would be A, B. You would label A, B. Number 14, which of the following describes some but not all rhomb rhombuses. So not all, but some of them. So all rhombuses have four sides, so that wouldn't be it. All angles are 90 degrees. Not all of them, but some. For example, a square would be a rhombus. But most rhombuses you see as the stretched out diamond. All sides of equal length, that's all. All of them have that. Two sets of parallel lines. Parallel, parallel. So some have all angles of 90 degrees, but not all. So it says, which of the following describes some, but not all? So that would be B. Fill in the sign that makes the sentence true. So how would you say these? So this is the tenths, this is the hundredths. So hundredths is the smallest place value. So we would say 61 hundredths and then 16 hundredths. So if you're confused, you can write those as fractions. So 61 hundredths and then 16 hundredths. So is 61 hundredths greater than, less than, or equal to 16 hundredths? Well, it is greater, so we can use the greater than symbol. Good job, guys.